Well, so one of the concepts that I talked about uh, from like one of the characteristics of the innovator's mindset is the notion of not only just problem solvers, right, but problem finders. And I think mm-hmm. that embodies that so beautifully, right? Because it's not like, mm-hmm. hey, kids, you should go figure this thing out that you might not care about, mm-hmm. right? So they, they actually have some personal connection to that. And uh, the story about the, the, the young woman in, in your class, you know, mm-hmm. working with the curriculum, you know, focusing on black history. What I, what I think is really amazing about that is as she's going through that process, um, 10 years from now, I don't know if people will know that she did that, but it's like that, but that, but that will be in there will be kind of her legacy. And it's just kind of interesting too. Like I always, I kind of think about that, that a lot of things that are in our schools, um, you know, maybe in, you know, and hopefully more positive than negative are, you know, the legacy of someone trying something different, someone pushing that and to give students that opportunity, right? Because a lot of times it's teachers, right? Like one of the things I'm proud of uh, is that I know in the school I was a principal at, if you go into the, the front um, front hallway, there's pictures of kids in that school to this day um, that are updated all the time. Nobody knows I had any hand in that. I don't care. But it, I know it actually changes the environment. And I think that's something that's really, and, and I think a lot of times we give educators that opportunity, but having kids do that is really, really incredible. Um, I'm going to ask you more about this in a second, but I, and I, and I don't know how much you can say here too, because I know there's a lot of, uh, so you do work with the local, the New Brunswick Teacher Association, like a local board. So not the, the provincial board. So you do that on a volunteer basis. Like how is that kind of balancing your work as the president of that, you know, versus teacher, especially, you know, not like the, you know, not like anything has gone wrong in education the last couple of years. It's been pretty smooth sailing for everybody, right? Yeah, I know. Right. It's actually why I started the podcast, right? One of the reasons I started the podcast is was I wanted to, you know, have conversations with teachers and connect with this over, you know, to kind of help people out. But like how how do you balance that? And like what what are some of the things that you've had maybe to deal with that you can, you know, obviously that you can talk about. Um how do I balance that? I, I think I try to balance it. I think what m- I try to do when we have mm-hmm. our rep, our branch rep meetings, that of course were all virtual last year. Right. Um, I try to give teachers an opportunity to express what they are feeling, but I also try to get them by the end of our meetings to try to focus on something that's really positive. Right. And I think that sometimes we... You know, there's a lot of issues in education. There's a lot of things that are out of our control. But I think a lot of what is in our control is how we look at things. And right. I think that sometimes, I think sometimes we have, I mean, trust me, the pandemic has not been fun. But I always <laughs> what? try to look at What are you talking no, about? No, it hasn't been fun. Right. But I always try to look at it like, okay, but what what can we take out of mm-hmm. this situation like what are some of the positive of, of the situation and some of the real positives of the situation are we have teachers and students who are way more comfortable with technology because mm. they were forced right. to be more comfortable with technology yep. and they would not have been forced nope. um, otherwise and I think that that's really uh, important and I think that teachers need to remember uh, the impact that they have on students and that that's a privilege that that is something that right. is a privilege that we, you are able to have this impact on uh these who are these you know these either tiny beings if right. you're in elementary larger beings if you're in high school i i think that you need i i try to remind them the influence that they have i think sometimes teachers think that they don't i think they think that Social media right. takes over that the uh, that you know that influences from the outside take right. over, but I think that teachers need to be reminded that even in twenty twenty one that their role is huge that you spend more time with that student than their own families spend time with that student so what kind of impact do you want to have and i it, you know i tried and i try to i guess I just try to bring i'm a very glasses half full mm-hmm. kind of person. And sometimes annoyingly so, I think, <laughs> to some people. But I think that it's really important to focus on that because it's really easy to focus on all <laughs> of the issues that are we really don't have 
control over. So that's so, what I, how uh, I try to balance it. So I, I really appreciate what you're saying. And I, I get accused of being overly positive too. I, I'm, I don't, I'm actually quite a cynical grumpy person if you want me to be honest grumpy yeah. Smurf. yeah i'm grumpy smurf on most days sometimes brainy <laughs> smurf right but the the reality of that is um i i'm always looking for solutions which is beautiful to what you're actually talking about um with your like kind of the intersection of what you do with your students and kind of your viewpoint on on how you you know lead as a president and one of the things, and this is, this is ego driven. I'm not going to lie to you. Right. I, when people are like, Oh, the system, the system. And I'm like, well, you know, like the system is actually made up of people and this is where the ego comes in. I actually feel like I can do a lot of things to actually move stuff forward and push people in certain ways and actually like challenge things right away and not just say like, Oh, like some force is actually not allowing us to do this. Like people are making these decisions. So as a person that's involved in this system, I actually can do things as well. And I remember, um, you know, I was, I was really, I remember like, I'm just, I'm trying to think of like, what's an example of this. I remember actually years ago um, when just kind of looking at something we were doing in our school that was like kind of just inherited passed down was a process that we had. This is going to seem like such a, a little thing. But to me, it was kind of a big thing, right? So we had these agendas. You know, like the agenda is like every kid is like the school logo and stuff like that. And you like write and it's like such a like badge Mm -hmm. of honor for a lot of our kids. So it was basically saying that. So it was passed down um, that if uh, teachers or if parents didn't pay the fees of the school, kid can get their agenda. And so like that was like, so it was like 10 bucks, right? So you couldn't get this done. So I like remember walking into a classroom and seeing like, hey, um, I'm not, well, how come a bunch of kids don't have their agendas? Oh, you know, like that's just something the school does. Like, you know, the school, right? The school, right? I'm like, well, this, like the school doesn't make the decisions, right? The people in the school make the decisions, right? The school, um, you know, historically basically doesn't give kids their agendas because then it's like impossible to get, you know, the fees out of the parents. I'm like, so basically, I can identify what families are struggling by who doesn't have an agenda. It's basically what I can tell. I can walk in yeah. and physically see it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. no, nah, that's not happening anymore. Give the kids their agendas. And if a family will work with the families to try to figure out their fees and stuff like that. And if worst case scenario that they don't pay their fees, I guess we're out 10 bucks per kid who couldn't pay for it. And I, I honestly, I, I, and this is where the overly optimistic thing is, I believe that I just kind of believe if a, if a family could, they would, they would pay it. Right. And I think, so I was like, so that, that was, that was done. And that was not, and I was like, that was like, kind of believe like that was a, 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 a school decision. I'm like, nope, that's wrong. We're not doing that. So that as a person, I challenge that. 